Well, at least 66 people have now died and more than 600 remain missing as wildfires continue to ravage California. Three are major wildfires burning in north of Sacramento and west of Los Angeles. And what a lot of people are forgetting or don't remember is there were several fires, over eight fires that started at the same time as the Paradise Fires, including the Woolsey Fire, which they combined them. So there's many, many other fires besides just the two, the Paradise and the Woolsey Fire that started that day. And last Friday, the campfire in Northern California engulfed the town of Paradise, leaving an apocalyptic landscape in its wake. There it is. The campfire is now California's deadliest and most destructive fire in the state's history. Look at this. It's like after World War II there. President Trump is set to tour the area tomorrow and had this, this to say in an interview with Fox. California, the purpose of your trip tomorrow. Just to see the firefighters, nobody's ever seen what's going on over there. And uh, now they're saying it could be as many as 600. This just came out before we right. met. Uh, it could be as many as 600 people killed, up by 400. It's incredible what's going on and burned beyond recognition. They can't even see the bodies. It's incredible. All to make room for Biff and his pleasure paradise. This is from Back into the Future, and that's Biff, or Mr. Trump, and his pleasure paradise. That's where he said when he went to paradise that it was a pleasure to be here. That's what he's talking about. And how many times, folks, do we get the same message, the same meme over and over? Megalia is right above paradise. M-A-G-A, -A, make America great again. It's on the greatest gold nugget museum, greatest gold finding in the Sierra Nevadas. Trump's putting up the wall. It was predicted from back in 1990, Heavy Metal Magazine. The wall is the theme they keep talking about for us, folks. Why do they keep talking about the wall? Because they play us with the memes. Do you remember Occupy Wall Street back in, what, 2011? What happened to that? That was all another meme, just like we put all our money into the Wall Street. And it goes away, as everyone's going to find out shortly with the coming market collapse. Well, for the latest, I'm joined on the phone by the mayor of Chico, California, Sean Morgan. Mr. Mayor, uh, what are we dealing with there? Uh, Chris, you, I, you just said it. It's, it's catastrophic. No one's seen anything like it before. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. You said it looks like uh, the aftermath of World War II. The analogy I made to someone the other day, I was, I was talking to the BBC, and I'd seen pictures of when London was bombed after World War II with St. Paul's Cathedral standing up. That's what it looks sure. like. Now, Chico is the closest town, 10, 15, 18 miles away from Paradise, where everybody allegedly fled to. But he's referring to a bomb going off, folks. It was a bomb. It was a nuked type bomb, even though nukes aren't the weapon that was used. But look at how this spread all across Northern California. And then we have the laser cuts on the sides of the hills. The evidence is overwhelming. And we're bringing out more evidence now about the causes of the fires besides the lasers. There's some very new, exciting testimony we'll be bringing out about the causes, the causal factors of these fires and what's really going on behind them. But when he talks about the bombs going off, we should be talking about the militarized state that was going on at the same time as well, which nobody seems to want to talk about, but pictures don't lie. Well, what's it like when it strikes? Because we hear about people getting killed, and most of us are used to fires that move, well, not at a human pace. They don't usually catch up to people if they really get a, a jump on it. That doesn't seem to be the case. And tell us what happens to people when they get caught up in this inferno. <laughs> well, you, you, you end up seeing what you, your clip on what the president just said. You end up with a lot of dead people. The, <laughs> the fire was moving at a rate of almost uh, 800 yards a minute. The inferno wasn't that fast, but it was jumping that quickly. So there, there were people that didn't get out. What's <laughs> it's extraordinary is 50,000 evacuated, people evacuated. <laughs> oh, he brought up the number again, 52,000. This was early on. They're using the number 52,000. They allegedly said escaped. We cannot find more than a few hundred, um, not much less a few thousand people that have been displaced. 
and we've been looking, we've been trying, we're seeking out, we got boots on the ground trying to do that, and we're going to have more testimony that likely no one got out, so another big lie they're doing. But this is the greatest disaster in the history of California. They keep promoting as a forest fire, but using terms like a bomb went off. And we now know uh, some six, seven weeks later that a lot of people didn't get out. Here's first person testimony saying how they were stuck. They couldn't get out. Tow truck driver who went in said there were rows and rows of streets with cars parked on the sides with people torched inside of them. Also, we have first person accounts of the cars getting too hot. They had to flee on foot along with their fellow local policemen and local firemen who were caught in the same exact situation. And you, sir, the mayor of Chico, are gonna laugh at us? You're laughing at the dead like this, ha ha ha, like the guy did in the uh, Sandy Hook, you know, the Robbie, whatever his name is, that got on TV after his child had died and was laughing before the interview. Give me a well, break. Let's talk about the people who escaped and are in your town of Chico, right? Your city of Chico, right? Now. What do you have? How do you handle? What is it? Fifty thousand people have just come. Yeah, we don't know exactly how many are here. And, Chris, we've got, a, we've got a small humanitarian crisis here. We're a very compassionate community. There's people in homes. There's people in sanctioned shelters. There's people in unsanctioned shelters. There's people in parking lots. And when I say we've got somewhat of a humanitarian crisis, uh, we've got the norovirus breaking out in some of the shelters. Uh, and FEMA and California OES is just starting to get a handle on that as we move people, more and more people, into proper shelters. So we actually went to the Walmart where the encampment allegedly was and found a scene like this where there were just a few tents, maybe 20, maybe 25, a few RVs parked in the parking lot some three weeks after, but we could not find anybody. Here's a original, original the missings list from the Walmart parking lot, but what we learned was that the people that were in the parking lot at Walmart that showed the numbers of people camping were actually the homeless from Chico that they brought in there to show the numbers. This is testimony not only from us talking to people, but people that are in town that talk to people as well and found out that they were the homeless staying there, not the missing. To not everybody, but for the most part. And then there's the subject of the California Operations of Emergency Services. We went there to this massive, massive setup FEMA operation in OES on Chico Airport, over 50 acres. It's got circus tents, it's huge, it's a massive setup. We hear they're bugging out. We don't know where they're bugging out to, but they set up this massive operation where we actually went into the National Guard, asked them where we could drop off clothes and food, and they had no idea where to do that. Deborah Tavares went in and talked to the National Guard. He says, we've been here since November 8th, since the attacks began. She said, oh, you've been here since November 8th, since the attacks began. Just like at the Red Cross at the Butte, Butte County Fairgrounds, same thing the guard from Georgia said. He said he'd been there since November 8th. This was premeditated. This was pre-planned attack. What are you going to ask the president when you meet him tomorrow, if you, get to, if you could meet him tomorrow? <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I'm going to get to meet him. I don't know what, I'm, what I'd ask him. I'm going to give him a, a, a paradise football uh, ball cap and ask if he'd wear it in honor of the football team. And I'm going to, ask, I'm going to say, hey, thanks for coming. Because, Chris, you know what? We don't get national politicians in Northern California in the rural valley. The governors don't come up here. The presidents don't come up here. So the fact that people are paying attention and we're getting the full cooperation of the federal and state governments is huge to the citizens of Paradise. Nobody would have ever thought this could have happened. I suggest, sir, you see 9-11, the dustification using directed energy weapons, just like in Powered Paradise. Just do it. So it was predictable because you guys called it and did it. So uh, the federal government is behind you. We're all behind each other. I think we can truly say, Jerry, right? And yeah, as we bring in former FEMA director for Clinton, a James Lee Witt, who owns disaster capitalist firms for Secor, he also owns E5, E6 visa programs, bringing in foreigners from India and China to take over jobs from people in the United States. But the FEMA, with their over 50 acres camp here at Chico, cannot seem to find any room for those that have been displaced by the fires, those that we, which we can find. Remember, over 50,000, they said, evacuated and got out. Yet again, we're having trouble. 
But why is it trouble, terrible tro trouble, toil and trouble? Because it's all about the gold. They're going to the gold standard. That's why the Gold Nugget Museum is in the center of paradise. It's run by the men in black. You've got the guy on the left, Gavin Newsom, the ex-governor, Jesuit School, Santa Clara, Trump, Fordham, Jesuit School, Jerry Brown, Jesuit minister, okay? And they blame PG&E, so you have somebody to point a finger out at a corpserations, and they use it directed energy weapons, or how could this mailbox be standing? But the homes are obliterated, you tell me. Uh, Jerry and I have been speaking, and Gavin and I have now gotten to know each other, and we're all going to work together, and we'll, uh, we'll do a real job. But this is very sad to see it. As far as the lives are concerned, uh, nobody knows quite yet. They're up to a certain number, but we have a lot of people that aren't accounted for. What do you want to ask for the American people to do right now? You've, I want to give you a chance to make a pitch for help. <laughs> if I can make a pitch for help, God, wow, what a great question. Thank you so much. I got two things. Number one, I'm going to ask for continued prayer because that's what we need. And then number two, the, the town of paradise needs hope and it needs money to rebuild. And the best two places to do that are the North Valley Community Foundation, nvcf.org, and Golden Valley Bank. They're both local institutions. Golden Valley Bank, you can find it online. All that money will go to the victims of the fire. It's not going anywhere else. It's not going to admin. It'll go directly to rebuilding a fantastic town that right now is part of our city. And we're happy to, we're happy to have them, but we're also anxious to get them back where they want to be. And what was that? Just give me that address again for people that didn't hear it, didn't write it down. Uh, so North Valley Community Foundation is nvcf.org. nvcf.org, locally run, very, very well run. I know the executive director. The other one is our local community bank, Golden Valley Bank in chicocalifornia.com. They've got a donate button right on the front page. Uh, and they are, they've been here for years. We will make sure all, they will make sure all those donations go the right places and don't get sucked up in the admin and other things. Yeah, trust us, just like here in Santa Rosa where James Lee Witt comes in the feds, appointed by the guy in the upper left, Darius Anderson, the owner of the Press Democrat newspaper, who's also a pg e lobbyist who appointed the federal ex-fed to come in to California to rebuild North Bay. And over $32 million was taken in by the Redwood Credit Union by Bob Steele, who works at a disaster capitalist company during the day. Just like the Red Cross, and when I went down to Hurricane Harvey, not one person had seen any help from the Red Cross at all, though they had taken in $450 million, half a billion dollars of our money, paid it out to none. Disaster capitalism at work. You're seeing it here. Do not give your money to the banks. Do not give your money to the Red Double Cross folks. They just take it, they steal it, and they keep it and don't help anyone. Well, I've learned over the years that the hardball viewers, a lot of them respond to these pleas, and I think you'll get some response, and it looks like you need some. Look at these pictures. Thanks so much, uh, Sean Morgan, Mayor of Chico. Hey, we, thank you for helping spread the message, Chris. We appreciate what you're doing. Why did they torch paradise, you may ask? Well, start by reading a synopsis of the John Milton poem, quote, Paradise Lost. It's about Satan's victory over God when he tempted Eve with the forbidden fruit, which led to Adam and Eve being expelled from paradise in their subsequent fall. Now the Athena laser weapon system is an upgrade of the weapons defense system called the Area Defense Anti-Munitions 
or Adam for short. The fire started on the 8th of November. It was eight days after Satan's expulsion from paradise that Satan returned to tempt Adam and Eve with the fruit of forbidden knowledge. The 8th is also one day before the 9th of November, 218, which is 9-11 in 11 years, 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 8. Therefore, the fire started on the eve of 9-11, Adam and Eve in the fall of paradise, another Luciferian ritual. Deep thoughts and prayers for those that have passed and the victims and those that are lost, homeless, uh, on their own with no one to help. We're the ones we've been waiting for, folks. We're helping. We're trying anyway. Thanks for all your support. But do not let this story die. There's over tens of thousands of people that are missing and unaccounted for. And we need, we need answers. So thanks for all your listening. Thanks for all your support. Do not give in to the fear. Make fear face everything and respond. And tag, you're it. Share this with others. Speak out. Do not let this happen and die in vain. Keep this story alive. Thank you.